Hey, 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 my name is Paul Zinks. Welcome to the last episode, which will have the last little chapter of the Waters Above Prelude Garden and Jealous Things. Let's go. I wake up sick. I wake up shaking. It's cold, so cold. It's cold and my stomach quakes. My first thought is to curl up, wrap my arms around myself, retain some heat. I don't have a blanket, I'm naked and I'm so cold I'm lost feeding in my fingers. I have to do what I can to stay warm. But I can't. The second I try to move my arms, stuck against restraints. I'm strapped down. My arms, my legs, my head, strapped down so tight I can move them a centimeter, strapped down so tight I can feel the buckle zing into my flesh. So tight it's going to bruise. In my drudgeness it takes a moment for the fear to set in. I look at my situation as if from outside, with a cold curiosity, almost amusement. But when the fear comes, it comes unrestrained. A strange place, a cold steel table, bright, bright lights, silence, and worst of all the waters. Feel empty, devoid of life, devoid of magic. It feels like breathing air, it feels like I'm always just on the edge of breathlessness. The fear comes and it comes hard, I tear at my restraints like a panicked animal. If anything, they only tighten. So this is what fear is like, it strikes me that this is the first time I've really felt it. I don't like it. But that thought, that realization, brings on a whole flood of others that only make me feel worse. I don't remember last night or the hour before or the day at all, even the year. I don't remember anything. For all I know, I was born this moment. The past stretches out behind me like a formless, unreachable expanse. A growing void, a yearning pain, hungry and impatient. I want to feel it. I have to feel it. I can't just leave it empty like this. It's not right. And so I scream. Or I try, but only a pain rasp comes from my mouth. My eyes sidon and quiver, I want to cry. I don't even know that I can. I'm not sure if it's something I'm capable of. My body tells me it's something I've never done. That's when I hear a voice drift across the room. Shame for you, the worst one yet. That voice like the deep. Okay, I have to move. I have no to normal voice to, for the narrative, okay? <clears throat> That voice like the deepest rumblings of a wave, I recognize that voice. The voice is my own. Every time you just keep getting weaker and weaker. The disgust is seeing myself whimper and cry is almost too much to take. My muscles tighten and freeze. I can turn my head to look at her, but I know what she looks like. And the things recess, the things she implies, just how many have there been. Oh well, we all have to suffer in pursuit of knowledge. She laughs, a laugh like cracking bone, the laugh of predator. That's what she is, a predator. I fall and pray to myself. I test my restraints again. I can feel her getting closer. I can feel her draining all the heat, all the life, all the joy from the water with every step. And then she's standing over me, watching, smiling, or trying with a curtain uh, broken line of her mouth. Her smile, my smile. She's displeased. I wonder if after everything else it would have been sedated again. I don't mind finding out. You're perfectly expandable. You exist to be expandable. I stop. I'm just wasting my energy anyway. But the sinking pit of my stomach tells me that doesn't even matter. It's all her game anyway. Who are you? I finally managed to gasp out. She smiles, so white and bright, brighter than the light hanging over me. She puts her hand against my cheek, almost tenderly. I try to call, but I can't move. This, more than anything else, is too much for me. There's more than the dot, I hope. Then, an, uh, as I broke her gentleness, she drags her fingernails across my cheek. I wince as she draws blood. Yeah, it. Or not, not if you have been particularly bright. <laughs> She turns around and steps away. I'm not even worth looking at. You are me. You're my clone. I made you as a subject for my experiments. More experiments. 
I don't realize something in your knowledge is that this is correct, that I would do the same thing given the need. This isn't the kind of person I want to be, but it won't do any good to pretend it's not true. No! She's turned around, I can tell, because her is voice clear again, clean and sharp, surgical. It's your turn! She steps closer so deliberately I hear her shoes click twice on the metal floor, the click of the heels slipping to the click of the two. She's drawing it out, she wants the anticipation to build in me, she wants me to be afraid, why does she want me to be afraid, how does this help her? We are the same, it should be obvious to me, but it isn't, I can't follow her, I don't know what she's after. Maybe we aren't so similar after all, but why wouldn't we be? So, tell me, do you remember being born? I open my mouth to reply, I don't, I don't remember anything that she must know that, if anything this is my birth. But before I can speak, she jolts across the few feet between us in a moment, she grabs the table and it shakes with the force of her movement. Despite that, however, her voice is still sweet and melodical. Don't ask for force to see, try before we speak! I realize I am holding my breath, I inhale deeply. I don't want to try to remember, not because I think she's wrong, but because I know she isn't. There must be something for me to remember. I don't have a choice, for I don't want to think about what she'd do to me if I defy her. I close my eyes. I try to calm myself. It's not easy the situation. My hands are shaking. And I think... I can feel something in the back of my mind waiting. But I have no links to it. It feels buried planted in my recesses long ago. Completely disconnected. I reach out for it, but it only pulls further and further away. I'm tied down here just as much as I'm tied to the table, and I give up just as quickly here. When I open my eyes, the other is standing over me. Don't! Her voice crackles and pops, her eyes swirl and sparkle. Don't stop now, Aira! Aira? I don't know that word, so why does it feel so familiar? Aira. That's my name, isn't it? But I... I'm Iris. And then I remember. Waking on the altar. Being taken to my keeper's arms. My naming. Before that even, I remember being called Compelled Pool. The disparate pieces of me gathering. Condensing. Giving birth to something new. To something much greater than before. And then I'm back on the table, the bile rising in my throat, the other still hovering over me, her hair covering my face like a curtain. What have you done to me? Hmm? Do you still not get it? She lifts her head up, smiling again. She loves showing off how much smarter she is than everybody so much, even that person herself. I thought you'd be able to figure it out between the two of you. <laughs> And then it snaps and the two galaxies inside me crash together. I'm Iris, but I'm also something else. I'm also the star, Aira. And Aira's memory spanned tens of thousands of years, back long before Aira was even born, before they were even a dream. And I can hear them now, the voice of my siblings, the voice of my ancestors, the voices of stars yet to be born. The whispered cacophony of time. H how did you do it? She laughs again, that sickening laugh, a laugh to bring down guts. I injected star material directly into you while you were growing. It will kill you soon enough, it's extremely toxic. Don't worry, Fa, you've done me such a great favor, you've rendered it harmless. You killed me away to gain the memories of the stars myself. The stars are dying, Gator. They're dying fast and no one seems to care, not even the stars themselves. But we care, don't we? We do. More than anything! And with this we might be able to save them! We need to understand why! I shudder her white smile, her sharp teeth. I don't trust her with this. I know her better than anyone and I know she can be trusted. Then what happens to me? She pulls her face close, so close I can taste the blood on her breath, so close I can see the hate on her tongue. Darling, I'm going to eat you! Holy sh... Thank you for playing. Thank you all so much for playing the Water Spoke Prelude. We hope you enjoyed reading it every bit as much as we enjoyed making it. It was made to see the passion dedication the team had for this game. We hope it inspired that some passion you all. 
The other box product was such a of love and seeing people excited to play it has meant the world to everyone from the bottoms of heart. Thank you. Also, well, this game has raised drinks like, even for more for the others both. Yes, it did. Comment later this year. Yes. We hope you've gotten to know the characters, gotten interested in the world, and gotten the taste of the sorry, atmosphere. Uh, taste of the atmosphere we ought to work. So very hard to create. We hope it's left you craving more and we absolutely plan to deliver. Yes, it did. Uh, finally, if you'd like to support us and help make this game the best, we possibly can consider pledging to our Patreon at this link. Open, open is in browser. Uh, with your, okay, let's do it actually. Alright, so the link is VNS Studio Elan, you know, patreon.com slash VNS Studio Elan, in case you want to help them out. Uh, okay. With your help, we'll be able to afford more assets, more bonus content, and maybe even more side stories like the ones you've seen here. But even if you can't pledge, please know that we really do deeply appreciate you playing. Your interesting sport is what keeps us going. With love, Studio Ilan. Return title. P.S. It looks like you haven't played the Heart of the Woods demo. No, I didn't. You should give that a shot and then come back here. You might find a small surprise. Okay, you've got me interested now. Is it on Steam? Maybe it is. Uh, actually, I want to check the extras as well. Gallery. TV room. Okay, that's a nice one. Alright, so at first I thought it was, it was it's going to be like uh, a little... Like a little cheesy story. From the first two chapters. And then we got the next two. Which, well, weren't cheesy at all. You know what? I'm really looking forward to this game. I really do look forward to seeing uh, how it will turn, turn out because it was interesting and we've seen a different concept for the visual novel. I think it's the first one I've seen so far like that, that, you know, what the narrator says, or basically what is not the part of the dialogue between people, was at the bottom, but whatever one person was saying, it was in, those, in, the, in the cloud. That's a, well, I'd say an easy concept, because that's what we get in mangas or comics, basically, but it wasn't really used in visual novels so far, at least not the ones I played, and well, this is the first time I've seen something like that, so yeah, nice improvement, plus, no matter how you look at it, it really was getting, I, I'm sure everyone noticed that as well, uh, the background animated, all the time animated, even now we have the little like particles of whatever it is flying around behind. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay, that would be all. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this little short journey. Uh, and now we're in total. Four chapters. Nice, nice, nice little beginning, nice little prelude to the full game which I'm definitely looking forward to see the release of, so yeah, for now, hope you enjoyed, uh, if you feel like it, actually go and support those uh, indie devs uh, on Patreon, because why not, if you have the possibility, why not, honestly, I feel like they work, uh, it's worth it, it's worth, you know, giving that little help that little push so they can create the games uh, all right let's end it here I know uh, what was going to be next I could say was okay I don't remember the title I could say if I minimize the games window but I I won't do it so next game would be a surprise I guess <laughs> anywho see you in the next one bye bye Hopefully this game will really be released. Probably it will.